Hey guys, and welcome to our next episode of TNCBA's Tips, Tricks, and How-Tos. And this week, we're kind of keeping with the theme of cranking that we started out here in the month of March. And Kelsey, as these days warm up and we continue to have these warming trends and these lengthening of days, mm -hmm. crankbaits are going to become a big player. I love to throw them. Y'all heard that in the oh, other video from a couple weeks ago. But this week, we're talking about a lipless crankbait. And when it comes to a lipless crankbait, I'm looking for something very different than what I was mm -hmm. with any of those other crankbaits that we were talking about, the rock crawlers, the DT-10s, the DT-6s. I'm looking for flats. Mm -hmm. I'm looking for banks that are starting to really transition areas where I don't have a ton of bouldering rock, yeah. but it's starting to get into some of that clay. Yeah. It's starting to move into some pea gravel and stuff. And people may throw it a lot on on Holston. I've heard of times people throwing it on Holston in certain areas. When I pick up this bait, I am talking about Cherokee. I'm talking about Douglas, uh, some lakes a little bit further down the road, uh, not quite as steep and deep, got some more limestone in them yeah. and some more clay. But with this lipless crankbait, and, and I throw red eye shads, not because I think they're the only lipless crankbait out there, but because I try to just simplify things. I don't like to be second guessing myself and changing up crankbaits 30 times a day. But the lipless crankbait is something that it's going to be, it works better on the flats because as you're working this bait, yes, you can work it down to 45 but you're going to be much better off working it across a much more gradual sloping bank, maybe with some isolated rocks or some isolated yeah, stumps out there. Um, but this bait covers a lot of water too. Oh boy. Yeah. So you can burn it. You can stop and go. You can kind of hop it as it comes along to you. But what I want to talk about is my setup first and foremost. So with the rod, this is, this is a Shimano Crucial. It's specifically made for lipless crankbait fishing. It's hmm. a medium heavy with a, a moderate fast tip. Uh, so you could, if you're working it around grass and stuff, and we last, uh, last fall, uh, going into winter down on Chickamauga, we caught our fish on this bait, ripping it out of grass. So you've got kind of that backbone to rip it out of some stuff and pop that bait really quick. But that moderate fast tip, again, with this bait moving the way it does, uh, it's going to give those fish a chance to, to eat it and get a good grasp on it. Uh, after that, the line that we're connected to here is 14 pound test uh, fluorocarbon. I like to be somewhere in that 14 to 15 pound range with my fluorocarbon. It doesn't overpower it. But again, where I'm throwing this around some isolated cover and different things, I do want something that's going to be very abrasive, uh, abrasion resistant mm -hmm. and something that's going to be tough uh, for those fish. Uh, when they bite, I don't want to worry about them running across some rocks or running across some stumps Definitely. And, and losing that. Uh, but this one, guys, right here is my red eye shad that is in that sexy shad color, uh, sexy chartreuse. Um, and thing. with it... It's a good shad imitator, but again, I still lean very heavily towards that uh, red this time of year. I'll throw a lot of reds. Another good color is your chrome blue back or your chrome black back. Chrome. Kelsey, yes, what, the chrome what has are... been your kind of favorite color when you do throw a, a lipless I've, crankbait? I've been a very much sexy chartreuse. I mean, mm -hmm. that that's just what I prefer. I think right. that's, that's the one I've caught the most fish on especially on lakes like Cherokee, Douglas, um, and Boone as well. Boone is another that's, one coming that's up. That's another that one that we got play. coming up that would, it would play very much so, I believe. Definitely. Um, but no, Sexy Chartreuse. Now, another one color. that I've heard in some stained water and muddy water, and, you know, white is a color uh, that does it really good, but not white, of course, in this. I'm, I'm talking about, like, uh, with a swim jig or with a chatterbait, but Bone. Bone. Bone is one that I've heard. What were you going to say? I was going to say Chartreuse and Black. Uh, yes, that's another good color and in those black, water, and we'll be talking about that water. when we get to square bills here in one of our next episodes. Mm -hmm. But chartreuse and black gives off a lot, of, a lot of profile. But I've heard bone that white can give a <laughs> really big profile if you have a sunny day. I would imagine so. Like a so, yeah. sunny day that in some sense. stained water, uh, a bone color, something like that's going to throw off a big profile, a big flash with it. But these baits, like I said. As you fish these, we are looking for those major transition areas going into spawning flats. So if I come off a bluff and I round the point and it's going into a pocket and it starts to go from major bouldering rock and the rock's getting a little bit smaller and you see that transition where it goes into some clay or some pea gravel, that's where I'm going to switch from those DT10s, those DT6s, and I'm going to pick up a lipless crankbait. Again, change your retrieve up. 
start well, I was out. I going to ask you, what kind of retrieve do you normally like to deal I, I start with? In out, certain... First thing, I start out burning it. Okay. Just because that's the simplest thing for me to do. Yeah. I'm going to burn that thing. Um, and then I'm going to kind of maybe do burn it, stop it. Burn it, stop it. Burn it, stop it. So I'm going to try the power play first. Then I'm going to start to get a little more finessey with it. Um, if I'm in, in a grass lake, I really want it to get caught up in the grass. Yeah. So I'm going to reel it slow enough that it gets caught caught up, rip it out. Reel it slow enough that it gets caught up, rip it out. Um, but again, for most of our lakes, we're not dealing with any grass. So when I'm fishing like that, I, it's more of a pump. I'll kind of pump the bait and reel and let it fall. Kind of like you would like a silver buddy or something Some, similar. But it's in a shallower situation. Yeah. But yes, definitely just like the silver buddy. So I'm kind of going through those different cadences there. Like he said, you know, burn it starting out if that's what you feel comfortable with. Or if there's a certain uh, way that you have fished it in the past that worked really well for you, start with that. And then change up your cadence as the day goes on just to see what they like and what you feel is, is getting the best bites. Pay attention to how the fish are eating this. Um, I'm typically going to change out my hooks and go to uh, some short shank triple grips to start out. But uh, one thing that I've, I've read a lot and heard on some other podcasts is if, if you feel like they're nipping at the bait, maybe changing color. Mm -hmm. If you feel like they're nipping at the bait still, go into a round bend, something with a little bit yeah. longer longer shank so that those fish are able to get that, that bait a little bit better. So playing with the hooks here is an important deal. Uh, but again... These baits, they're made to fall in shimmy. So don't be afraid to kill them and let them fall. Oh, yeah. Um, and play with the weights a little bit. I, I always go with a, a half ounce to start out with. Um, I know Dad likes to throw the little bit lighter. Sometimes he'll get with the, the quarter ounce. Yeah. Um, with the old time, the true rattle trap. I shouldn't say old time. They're still around. But just that old time, true chrome blue back rattle trap, he really likes to throw a lot. Oh, yeah. And the thing is, those fish, especially if they, in the fall too, when they're schooling up and stuff, the lipless can be good. But this is just a great bait to cover water because this time of year, as those fish are in that pre-spawn mode, a lot of movement going on, you need to be able to cover water quickly. And then maybe you can switch over to something a little more finessey, something a little bit slower. But again, when they are eating this bait, you better be throwing it because you're going to be able to get the biggest bass that have moved up. Oh yeah. You are going to have, but they'll, they'll break your heart too. That's the hard thing for me about it because there is a lot of weight here and mm -hmm. you can hear that rattle guys. I like that rattle. I did read something or listen to something by Otto Foe just recently that he, he leans a little bit more towards silent stuff. Now he really likes some silent and well, you think about it. The fish has a lateral line on their side, mm -hmm. a lot of vibration. I mean, which is what's coming off of that bait right. is a lot of vibration. So they're feeling that bait too. Oh, I yeah. mean, not, not necessarily just hearing it, but they're feeling it. So, I mean, I, I could see that. I understand that. But still, there is a lot of rattle, a lot of noise with these as, as you reel them and work them, but they will break your heart because there, there is a lot of weight here. Um, similar to that silver buddy, like you talked about, these fish can come up and they can go to thrash. And, and if that bait is, is just barely skin hooked or something, mm -hmm. that's why it's so important to have the right equipment with the rod. You don't want to have too stiff of a rod that's pulling it away from them. You want them to get that bait and eat it really well. Um, and you got to work those fish really, really soft, really easy. Um, don't horse them, uh, because like we said, they're going to come up and they start throwing that bait. So luckily this time of year, they're typically a little bit more sluggish, a little more lethargic. You yes. don't have to, to worry about it as much, but as it starts to warm up more and more, it's becoming more of a problem, but lipless crankbait guys, again, run through our breakdown. I am throwing this on a high speed reel. Mm -hmm. Okay. Seven, one or higher. Uh, I am throwing this on a medium heavy action rod made specifically for lipless crankbaits with a moderate fast tip, 14 pound fluorocarbon, 14 or 15, whatever your preference is. And then I'm starting out with my half ounce and I'm throwing things like the chartreuse sexy shad. I'm throwing that red chili crawl, throwing the chrome and blue to start out. Then think about your retrieves, burn it, burn and kill it. A little bit of a, a, a pump action and then reel and let it fall back to the bottom. And then when you're talking about the banks and the types of areas where you're fishing this, Kelsey, we are looking at those transition areas going back into flats. The, the gradual slopes. The gradual slopes. Not talking about any 45s. Not talking about bluffs. We're talking about heading into those spawning areas. Catch you a few warm days. Push back into those areas. Don't be afraid to go shallow early, guys. Mm -hmm. Put your hands on a rod and reel that is attached to a lipless crankbait and go out there and have you a good time, guys. We'll see you on the next tips, tricks, and how-tos. Take care.